This is a clock spring from a 2011 Toyota Tundra. It's what runs all the wires for all the steering wheel controls. Nowadays we have our cell phones that hook in through it. Uh, we can go through CD or radio. You can do volume up or down. and You can also select the next track or radio station or whatever. So all of these controls are on the steering wheel and they twist around. And as many of you know, you can only twist a wire so far without it breaking. And that's why we have clock springs like this one. You can see this one's got a few markings on it. And then it also has two different plugs. This has got a two-stage airbag in it. So it can go off a second time depending on severity of the accident. You can see here it says five turns. And as we look at this, we can go around once, twice, and a half. And then it kind of binds. It doesn't go much further than that. It just kind of hangs up. So there's our half turn. One two, there's a half turn, one, two, and then it binds. So you get five turns out of it. Now your steering wheel will only turn so far. When we turn the steering wheel, there's only so much movement before the linkage starts to hit against the side. You can see that it binds here and it also binds there. So you don't have to be able to turn the wheel infinitely, only just a little ways. So that two and a half turns each direction is fine. As I said, this has two different plugs for the airbag. You can see each one is two wires. So you'll have a positive and a negative for each wire. And when they get 12 volts and a ground, they'll go off. So let's pop this open and see what goes on under all this plastic, shall we? There's a lot going on here. So there's this part here, which has nothing to do really with the clock spring, but it's actually a steering sensor. So this senses the position of the steering wheel. And then this is the actual clock spring. You can see that there's a bunch of pins here. If we count these, there's one, two, three, four of them in this one. And then on this one, it's double. It's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve pins. But then there's only four wires here. Again, that's more than likely due to the controls that you have on your steering wheel. And then there'll be a couple of wires for the horn typically as well. Well, that problem solved. Alright, moment of truth. What do you think you'll find? <laughs> see if I can get this to come out all together. Watch closely as I pull this out. You'll see that there's little roller wheels. Two of them are orange and then there's a bunch that are black. But the cable's all located inside of that. And those are there to just help facilitate it moving smoothly so that it doesn't chafe or wear on the inside. When you turn it one direction, it binds down and tightens on that center spool. When you turn it the other direction, it expands against those wheels. So if you look inside, it's a lot like a a computer printer ribbon or something. So there's actually two of them layered together. You see this one here goes through all of that and you've got all these little things, these little wheels, these little rollers. But you have point A and point B and again, if you turn this too far, say you have the steering undone to where the wheel can turn all the way around, none of the steering linkage is hooked up, then you can yank these out. Yeah, so you can just pull that out right there. It looks like some kind of a retainer. Nope. Apparently they're set on there. So let's take a look and see how many wires there are. So as you go across this, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wires. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you've got a total of 16 wires. Say this is just the steering angle sensor, but holy smokes, it's got a ton of wires on it. That's essentially what you have in a clock spring, is you just have a whole bunch of wires that are set in ribbon form. So this is the first one that I've done that had the two separate plugs. So that's kind of interesting, but you go inside and then it has two separate ribbons. I'm used to seeing just one ribbon, and oftentimes there'll only be four wires in it, or four uh, ribbon wires. What do you call it when it's just a flat 
wire like that. You can see that there's a little window, a little sight glass underneath of it. And as far as being springy, it's not supposed to be springy at all. It's supposed to just uh, be able to move freely up until it gets to the end. What's interesting to me is the tension that you feel on either end of the stop. It's, it's not as though it just goes to, you know, unwinding or whatever as it were. It seems to pull at the end of it, and I think that's where these come in. But pretty interesting just the same.